Let's head back to the mean streets of San Francisco for the third Dirty Harry installment. Let's get it. I hope everyone is doing well out there and today we're going to talk about the third installment of the Dirty Harry franchise and that film is The Enforcer. This film came out December 22nd of 1976. It was three years after Magnum Force and this was originally conceived as the final Dirty Harry film. That was all in good intentions and it didn't make a lot of money. It had a nine million dollar budget and it made 46 million. Pretty much in line with the first two films. And it was pretty well received, though not as well received as the first two films and Clint Eastwood thought he was done with the character until 83 when they made Sudden Impact and Clint Eastwood directed that film. And it was, that was the biggest hit of the series. And then in 88, they made the last one, The Deadpool, which we will get to those two installments in the next couple weeks. Now, Clint Eastwood was originally tapped to direct this film, but he was busy on a little film called The Outlaw Josie Wales. He was still uh, overseeing the edit on that film because he ended up directing that film when it got taken off of Philip Kaufman. So he didn't have time to prepare to direct this film, so he gave it to somebody he's worked with before, James Fargo, who was going to be the assistant director on this film, but he got promoted to director. And then he went on, him and Clint Eastwood went on, uh, he directed Clint Eastwood in Every Which Way a Little Bit Loose a few years later, and he directed Chuck Norris in Force Vengeance, and he did other projects after that. Um, Clint Eastwood, um, this is rated R, like all the other Dirty Harry films, an hour and 36 minutes long. It's the second shortest Dirty Harry film behind The Deadpool, which is the shortest film. And it's... Uh, Rated, uh, had $9 million budget again, $46 million at the box office, so it was a huge hit. Clint Eastwood was back to play Dirty Harry, Harry Callahan. Tyne Daly was brought in to play Inspector Moore. Tyne Daly actually turned this film down three times until finally she accepted because they finally saw her point about taking out the romantic subplot between her characters and Dirty Harry's. Clint Eastwood had agreed, they got rid of that subplot, and she accepted the role, which is good because she's really good in the film. Deverin... Bookwalter plays Bobby Maxwell, our main villain, and he is the leader of the People's Revolutionary Strike Forces, his militant group in San Francisco that wants to give power back to the people. But honestly, his character by the end of the film, he just wants to kill people. He doesn't give a shit about any of that, really. And Albert Popwell shows back up again. Actually, this is probably his biggest role, although in Sudden Impact, he's Harry's partner. He plays a different role every time he showed up. Um, and this is his third crack at playing a role in the Dirty Harry film. And he plays Mustafa. He is the leader of this black militant group, Uhura, who's, they're not very militant, as we come to find out during the film. And right away we see the People's Revolutionary Strike Force, um, especially Bobby Maxwell and this girl. And they, Bobby kills these two employees for the gas and electric company for their truck. And what they're going to do is use that truck for this warehouse in San Francisco as cover they, had, they know there's automatic weapons stored there, explosives, and LAS rockets, which, is, which are pretty much one-shot um, rocket launcher. That's what a LAS rocket is. And they do go, and this, this warehouse has the shittiest security. It's like one old guy who's like 70. They, Bobby Maxwell kills him, and they get what they want. But Frank DiGiorgio, who's been, who was seen in the other two Dirty Harry films and as Dirty Harry's partner sometimes, shows up with his new partner. And they try to stop it, but they bold well. DiGiorgio gets mortally wounded, goes to the hospital, and ends up dying, and his partner gets ran over by the truck. And we get introduced to Dirty Harry before this with DiGiorgio. This is before he gets demoted, and he stops a robbery at a liquor store, and he gets demoted to personnel, which is when he meets Inspector Moore. They're doing interviews with police officers because they have some inspector um, vacancies. And the, there's a, a woman there from the mayor's this council to try to get women more involved in police off being cops on the street and harry's not against it totally but he brings up the point where like when um inspector moore comes in well before she's an inspector he, he asks her about her most important arrest and she doesn't have any she's been in the records and harry kind of gets an argument with this woman from the, the mayor's office about i'm not looking to give her a hard time i'm just asking if she's prepared to go out on the street because she's gonna have a partner when she's on the street and if she's not ready she can get killed and get herself killed and get her partner killed and i think that's too much of um, too much, too much to lose for just being stylish, which is Harry's way of saying PC. We see Harry trying to navigate these PC waters that are creeping into the San Francisco Police Department. But after Giorgio gets killed, Harry gets his job back as inspector, and he gets partnered up with Inspector Moore, much to his dismay. But pretty soon they start getting along. Harry sees the value in Inspector Moore, and Inspector Moore starts warming up to Harry. She's heard all about Harry, all the stories, and carrying the 44 Magnum, and she even asks him, why do you need that cannon in, in San Francisco? And Harry's like, well, I when I 
when I shoot, I intend to hit the target, but in this city, wind can throw a bullet off a little bit. I've seen 38s ricochet off of windows. And um, pretty much, Harry uh, strikes a deal with Mustafa by information. He, Mustafa knows a few people that are in this um, People's Revolutionary Strike Force. And Mustafa ends up giving Harry the information because he sees how much of a danger this militant group is. And they've been blowing things up in the city. They took the mayor hostage. And they're holding the mayor hostage on Alcatraz for a $2 million ransom. And Mustafa helps Harry. Harry and Inspector Moore goes to Alcatraz, save the mayor. Unfortunately, Inspector Moore gets killed in the process trying to save Harry's life. And Harry kills Bobby Maxwell with the, the Laws rocket on top of this tower, watchtower, and spectacular. And that's pretty much the end. Um, this... This movie is a fast-paced action film. It's a pretty good Dirty Harry film. It's just not as good as the first two films. Mostly because the bad guys are not as interesting as the police officers that are taking revenge on criminals in Magnum Force. And they're certainly not as interesting as the Scorpio Killer in the first film. And I, I like the interactions between uh, Tyne Daly and Clint Eastwood. They're really good together on screen. All the actors are doing well here, except for the gentleman who plays Bobby Maxwell is good until towards the end of the film. Then he becomes so unhinged it's almost cartoonish. And by that point, I couldn't wait for Dirty Harry just to kill this guy. Because you know he's going to kill him. That's, how we're, that's Harry's M.O. So by the time he blows him up, I'm cheering like, thank God this guy's gone. Because he's so over the top by the end. He's okay. And in like the last quarter of the film, he just goes batshit crazy. Uh, but overall, it's a decent Dirty Harry film. It's short to the point. There's a lot of action scenes. Um, there's some interesting um, layers in this movie. But they don't dwell on it. Like... They don't explore the whole PC culture that much. We see Harry dealing with it, but then we gotta get back to the main point of the story. And even like these militant groups in San Francisco, like we talk about them, but the story is just, they're so worried about getting on to the next action scene and getting towards the end that we never dwell on or go into it that heavily really. Um, but overall, it's still a pretty damn decent Dirty Harry film. It's not better than the first two films by any stretch, but I would still give this one an eight out of 10. I think it's a really well done, Dirty Harry film is just not as good, and that's more to do with the bad guys more than anything. They're just not as interesting as the first two films, which how could they be? I mean, they set the bar pretty high in the first two films, but still, it's a pretty damn good action thriller. I would give The Enforcer an 8 out of 10. That's right, an 8 out of 10 for The Enforcer. Have you ever seen this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I greatly would appreciate that. I'll be back later in the week with a review for 1990's Night of the Living Dead, directed by Tom Savini. Until then, I hope you're all doing well out there, and I'm just going to leave you with, bye.